Today we're going to look at a nice functional inequality problem. So our goal is to determine all functions from R to R satisfying the following three properties. So the first one is maybe, I wouldn't say the most important, but the one that drives a lot of our arguments, and it is the functional inequality that I talked about. So it says that for all real numbers, X and Y, f of x plus f of y is less than or equal to f of x plus y, which is less than or equal to f of x plus f of y plus 1. Okay, and then next up, we see that for all x on the interval from 0 to 1, including 0 but not including 1, we have f of x is less than or equal to f of 0. And then uh, we also know a couple of values of this function already. We know that f of 1 is 1 and f of negative 1 is negative 1. So let's maybe look closely at this second fact that we're given and observe that it says something about what's going on this half open interval. So perhaps we could extend this from an inequality to an equality to find the value of this function on this open interval. So maybe let's say that's the first thing that we're going to do. So I'll just say what's going on for x on this half open interval. Great. So how might we do this? So maybe the first thing to do would be to find the value of f of 0 because that's somewhat of a distinguished point on this half open interval given that it's, well, this least point on the half open interval. So we're going to do that by trying to get the value of f of 0 into this inequality, this blue inequality. So let's maybe zero in on this x plus y term and observe that if x plus y is zero, then, well, we'll be in good shape. Furthermore, we know f of 1 and f of negative 1, so perhaps we should take x to be equal to 1 and y to be equal to negative 1. Okay, and I'll put a blue box around this to show that I'm using our blue dot inequality here. So observe that gives us f of 1 plus f of negative 1 is less than or equal to f of 0, which is less than or equal to f of 1 plus f of negative 1 plus 1. But of course, by our given over here, we know that f of 1 plus f of negative 1 is 0. So this in fact gives us the inequality 0 is less than or equal to f of 0, which in turn is less than or equal to 1. Okay, good. So we know that f of 0 lies on the interval from 0 to 1. So now that doesn't give us a value though, that just gives us a range. But perhaps we could insert f of 0 into our blue inequality another way. Perhaps by setting x equal to 0 and y equal to 0. Great. So let's see what that'll give us. So of course here we'll have f of 0 plus f of 0 is less than or equal to f of 0 plus 0, which is f of 0, which in turn is less than or equal to f of 0 plus f of 0 plus 1. So now maybe what I'll do is subtract an f of 0 from all parts of this inequality. That's like an obvious thing to do because we see f of 0 is all over the place. And that's going to give us a new inequality, f of 0 is less than or equal to 0, which in turn is less than or equal to f of 0 plus 1. Now, in fact, here we don't need the full power of this inequality, we just need half of it. We need this fact here that f of 0 is less than or equal to 0, which we can put together with this fact here that f of 0 is bigger than or equal to 0, to tell us that, well, f of 0 must be equal to 0. That's because, well, the only number that's less than or equal to 0 and bigger than or equal to 0 is 0 itself. Okay, good. 
So we've got a value for f of zero. Let's see how we can use that to get a value for the rest of the elements of this interval. All right, so we just determined that f of zero was equal to zero. And now, like I said before, we're gonna try to find the values of f of x on the rest of this interval. So that makes sense to take x equal to itself. In other words, we're gonna leave x almost free. We're just gonna make sure that it's on the interval from zero to one. And this time I'm gonna use an open interval from zero to one. And that's because, well, we know that f of zero is zero, so we don't really need to worry about that. And the other reason to do that is because now we're gonna set y equal to one minus x, which is also on the open interval from zero to one. And if we had started with an interval that included zero, then one minus x would be on the interval that included one. And then we wouldn't really be able to use this second inequality right here. Okay, so let's maybe observe that in this case, we're gonna in fact use a couple of these inequalities or a couple of these givens. So I'll put two boxes around them. So let's notice that we know that f of x is less than or equal to zero, and we know that f of one minus x is, is also less than or equal to zero. And that's, well, by this green dot inequality, because, well, we know they're less than or equal to f of zero, which we determined to be zero already. But if you've got two numbers that are less than or equal to zero, that means if you take their sum, you're also gonna have something less than or equal to zero. Okay, so there we have that. f of x plus f of one minus x is also less than or equal to zero. Now, let's see what we can get out of this blue inequality. So we'll know that f of x plus f of one minus x is less than or equal to f of, well, the sum of x plus one over x, which is pretty clearly equal to one which in turn is less than or equal to f of x plus f of one minus x plus one. But now we know that f of one is one, that's given. So let's use that and see where that takes us. So that's gonna give us an inequality one is less than or equal to f of x plus f of one minus x plus one, which we can simplify to see that zero is less than or equal to f of x plus f of one minus x. But now see what we've done here is that we've pinned this thing f of x plus one minus x between zero and zero. Pretty similar to what we did in the last step. So, well, that means that that sum has to be equal to zero. So we have f of x plus f of one minus x is equal to zero. But now let's go up here and observe that if either f of x was not equal to zero or f of one minus x was not equal to zero, then they could not sum to zero. And that's because both of them are less than or equal to zero. So putting that together with this fact that they sum to zero, we know that f of x equals zero and f of one minus x is also equal to zero. But of course, all we really need is that f of x is equal to zero as x is playing the role of some arbitrary element between zero and one. Okay, so there we have it. We know f of x is the constant zero on this half open interval. So now let's maybe try to extend the values of f to another interval and see what we have. We just determined that for all x on this half open interval from zero to one, we have that f of x is equal to zero. And now, well, now we're gonna try to extend the values of f a bit. So perhaps we could extend two values of x on maybe the interval that comes right below the interval from zero to one. Let's say negative one to zero. And I'm gonna leave this as an open interval because we already know what's going on on the endpoints. Now let's observe that if x is on this interval from negative one to zero, then x plus one is on the interval from zero to one, 
which tells us that f of x plus one is equal to zero by what we've already proven. So let's try to use that. And we'll do that by taking x as, you know, maybe like a free variable, just it's free up to the fact that we need it on the interval from negative one to zero. And we'll take y equal to one. So we're setting y equal to one precisely because we'll get f of x plus one in this middle portion. Okay, so what is that gonna look like inside of our inequality? We'll have f of x plus f of one is less than or equal to f of x plus one, which in turn is less than or equal to f of x plus f of one plus one. But let's see, that tells us that f of x plus one is less than or equal to zero, which in turn is less than or equal to f of x plus two. So we've got something like that. So now let's take just one portion of this inequality and see that we get something kind of nice out of it. Let's take this portion that I've underlined in purple and see that that tells us that f of x is less than or equal to negative one. Okay, so we've got some sort of inequality involving this f of x. Now, let's see if we can get a companion inequality. Like it would be super nice if we got the inequality f of x is bigger than or equal to negative one. So let's see if we can get that. And we'll do that by going up here and extending this fact to see that this means that negative x is on the interval from zero to one which in turn tells us that f of x is equal to, or f of negative x is equal to zero. And let's see how we can get that inside of our given inequality. So we can by setting x equal to itself between negative one and zero, and we'll take now y equal to negative x. And let's see what that leaves us with. So that'll leave us with something like this. We have f of x plus f of negative x is less than or equal to f of zero, which is less than or equal to f of x plus f of negative x plus one. Now observe that this left-hand portion will just turn into f of x. This middle portion turns into zero, and then this right-hand portion turns into f of x plus one. Given again that f of negative x is zero, we used that twice. Now let's take this right hand portion of our inequality and see that that tells us that negative one is less than or equal to f of x. So look at what we've got here. We have f of x is less than or equal to negative one and negative one is less than or equal to f of x. So putting that together, we see yes, f of x must in fact be equal to negative one. So that tells us that as long as x is between negative one and zero, we see that f of x is equal to negative one. Okay, so I think the identity of this function is shaping up, but let's maybe first look at its graph and then we'll finish this whole thing off. So what are the facts that we have so far? Well, we know that if x is between zero and one, not including one, f of x is zero. We know if x is between negative one and zero, not including zero, f of x is negative one. But now plugging this all together or forming a graph out of this, I should say, we see that we've got this nice step-like function. But if you look at this closely, well, this isn't any step-like function. This is exactly the floor function. So like I just said, it looks like, in fact, f of x is equal to the floor of x. Okay, well now how could we go about finishing it off and proving that f of x is, yes, in fact, the floor of x? Well, it'll in fact follow from the following claim. This claim is not so hard to prove and in fact, we've been, we've been proving special cases of this claim the whole time. And the claim goes like this. So for all x, which are real numbers, we have f of x plus one is equal to f of x plus one. Okay, so let's see how we can get at the proof of this claim. 
So we're going to start by taking x equal to itself. So anyway, we're fixing it to be just something free, any real number. And then we'll set y equal to 1. And well, like we've been doing, we're going to plug that into our blue dot inequality over here. So that's going to leave us with f of x plus f of 1, which I'll just go ahead and write down as 1 is less than or equal to f of x plus 1, which in turn is less than or equal to f of x plus 2. OK, great. And then, well, let's observe that our goal is for f of x plus 1 to be equal to f of x plus 1. And now we've got an inequality involving that setup already. So now we just need to have the opposite inequality, which means well, how could we get that? Well, maybe we could repeat this blue dot inequality, but now we'll set x equal to x plus 1, and we'll set y equal to negative 1. So let's see what that'll give us. So we'll have f of x plus 1 is minus 1, because we know f of negative 1 is negative 1, is less than or equal to f of x plus 1 minus 1, which is just f of x. And I'm going to stop there because notice that this will immediately give us f of x plus 1 is less than or equal to f of x plus 1. But now this inequality that I have magenta underlined together with our other inequality, which already had magenta underlined, immediately implies that f of x plus 1 is equal to f of x plus 1. 1. But that finishes this whole thing off because that has the effect of taking this graph, which is the graph of the step function on a subinterval or on a subset of the real numbers, and well, just pushing it around the real plane as needed. And that's a good place to stop.